on his 30th birthday, the Blues Brothers were number one. He was on the number one television show, and Animal House was the number one grossing comedy. They've all got their opinions, but then what do they know? The tragic, the the tragic death of John Belushi is the subject Great. of the latest documentary from award-winning director R.J. Cutler. The movie profiled the great Chicago-born actor and singer with the help of animation and his personal letters to his wife. He also had access to 50 hours of unreleased interviews to make Belushi. RJ joins us uh, now this morning. RJ, good morning. Nice to have you with us. Uh, happy to be here. How you doing? Very good. Good morning. Uh, it's been, uh, I don't know, uh, since the, the early 80s that we lost uh, John Belushi. What is, yeah. it, what is it that you learned? I mean, you know, so much has been written about him and said about him in all these years. What were you able to, you know, find that we hadn't heard before? Well, we have, uh, for this film, featured interviews that were done in the wake of John's passing for an oral history. Within a few years of his passing, Judy Belushi, his widow, decided to put together an oral history of those nearest and dearest to John. So in this film, you hear from people who knew him best, and you hear in the years following his passing. And what's created as a result is a rather uh, a vivid and uh, raw and emotional portrait of the man, not in terms of how he died, but in terms of how he lived. And, so, uh, sorry, go ahead, Robin. So these are like audio tapes that were found in his wife's basement, is that right? Well, it's true. They were found in his wife's basement when she invited us to Martha's Vineyard in order to kind of uh, get to know each other, first of all, and then to explore his archive. Judy knew that they were there, but nobody had really listened to them since they had been conducted, except in as much as they were used to uh, kind of uh, inform a book that was written called Belushi. Um, but what was included in that book was the tip of the iceberg of what we had access to. So, I so in our film, you hear from... Dan Aykroyd and Jim Belushi and uh, uh, John Landis and Penny Marshall and Lorne Michaels and so many people, Harold Ramis, who knew John best, and of course, Judy Belushi is extensively interviewed as well. Does this uh, offer us any new insight into John growing up uh, here in the Chicago area in, in, sure in Wheaton and you know who, who he was then and who he became and how drugs affected uh, his, his life? Well, yes, uh, all of it. Everything you just said is uh, featured in the film. We, uh, we go deep into his, uh, his childhood in Wheaton, into his high school years when he met Judy. You know, this is also a love story. John, John and Judy Belushi met when they were in high school and were together for the rest of uh, John's life. And, um, and, and Wheaton features, uh, uh, figures uh, uh, significantly in his story, as of course does uh, a second city in Chicago. I mean, this is where John in high school went and, and after seeing one show at Second City, he, he said to Judy, this is who I'm going to be. This is what I want my life to be. What was the driving force behind his depression uh, and what led to the drugs? Was it the depression or was there some other factor and they just kind of intersected? Well, I, I leave that to the viewer to determine. Certainly we present all the factors in his life and, and uh, the, the, you know, his history. Uh, but, but the truth is uh, whatever led him there, John was an addict. He suffered from drug addiction and he was somebody who was incapable of, uh, of overcoming the disease on his own. Uh, and he, uh, you know, he was, he lived during a time, I mean, John died in 1982. The Betty Ford Clinic was founded in 1982. Wow. Ours was a culture that didn't really understand the perils of addiction and the disease of addiction in those years in the way that we do now. And whereas he likely would have received the help that he needed, in our culture today, and he likely would not have been stigmatized in the way he most certainly feared being stigmatized back then. Uh, he didn't. Uh, he didn't have the help that he he would have needed, nor did Judy, nor did all those who loved him and wanted to help him. And Carrie Fisher is featured in the film, speaking about this in a very very powerful way, recounting evenings spent with John, discussing addiction, 
uh, the challenges of overcoming it, and as I say, the the lack of a toolbox to deal with the disease. Jim Belushi tweeted this yesterday. I don't know if you saw it. He said, I just watched the documentary of my brother coming out this Sunday on Showtime. It ripped my heart out for Judy, who I love so dearly. It ripped my heart out for my family, who still, still deals with the ripples from this. And it ripped my heart out for John. I miss him so very much. Wow. Wow, well, that's very moving. I, I, I've been in the edit room finishing another film, so I, I was unaware of that tweet. But, um, you know, bless them all, I said. Mm -hmm. What uh, what did you learn? I mean, I mean, was there one thing that just really surprised you going? Yeah, through you know, the, the, we're 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 talking of of the tragedy, but really, the film is not about the tragedy of John's loss, though you feel it deeply, and it was deeply tragic, and it affected the whole nation and the world, and it ripples through, through the culture to this day. But the thing about John Belushi, you got to remember, is that the, the greatness of John lives with us still. John was not just a great performer, a great physical performer, a great writer, a great comedian, a great actor, uh, a, a, a great, he, he was a great visionary. It was, it, it was he who first put together the actors who became the cast members of Saturday Night Live. He collected most of those people yeah. for the National Lampoon Radio Hour. It, it was he who brought Dan Aykroyd from Toronto to New York. It was he who brought Harold Ramis, Harold Ramis from Chicago to New York. Mm. He brought Gilda to New York. He brought Bill Murray to New York. Mm. He, wow. his, he had the relationship with Chevy Chase before anybody else did at National Lampoon's Lemmings. And he wrote every episode of the Radio Hour. So he was, I mean, they wrote as a team, but he was the writer-director of the National Lampoon Radio Hour, which predated Saturday Night Live. Live. Now, Lauren Michaels, God bless him, he put it all together, he changed the world, he has sustained that show, but John put that group together. And then it was John who was always pushing himself in new directions. It was John who created the Blues Brothers, the Blues Brothers, which really was, nobody even knows to this day exactly what it was. It's, it's, it, 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 it was kind of this mind-blowing adventure that spread into films and performances and record albums and appearances on TV. And, and it, was, it was performance art a, a full decade before there was such a thing as performance art. And John was the visionary behind that as well. So that, I think, is the breakthrough kind of revelation of the film that as we look back on John Belushi, we can see so many things that he influenced and impacted that are with us to this day. The uh, documentary is called Belushi. It premieres this coming Sunday, November 22nd on Showtime. R.J. Cutler, thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. Time out for Ron Tom.